video number 18 and we're going to be looking at the results of individual participants and uh, as a spoiler of alert for some of them the results don't look very good at all and well that's to be expected for such a short study where the data were gathered in quite a hurry at the scanner where there was just time for people to see a few of the stimuli before uh, our book time on the scanner expired uh, nonetheless it's really interesting to see the difference between uh, individual participants the effect of changing the uh, p threshold and whether or not you should ever do that and the average result across the five participants enjoy it this is the biggest heat map we're likely to see which is the effects of interest ac across all participants so every voxel where there is a, a regressor with a, a beta that's uh, significantly different from zero um, we're going to get some null results now because and we've looked at the, sort of the average across everyone um, now what I want to do is define some contrasts for individuals so we're just going to look at faces minus scrambled but I want to see the difference between our five participants because our so-called fixed effects analysis looking across the five participants are sort of given an average which can be a bit misleading so let's look at each different people to do that we have to define some more contrasts so we're going to do faces minus scrambled for I think I might put it at the beginning actually participant 10 was our first one and so that will just be uh, 1 minus 1. And then I can define a new contrast, which is for participant 11, face minus scrambled. And that's going to be zeros on participant 10's regressors, and then a 1 minus 1 on the face and the scrambled for participant 11. So here we have zeros on the four regressors for participant 10, zeros on the regressors for participant 11, 1 and minus 1 on the face and scrambled for participant 12. Let SPM pad the rest. Now let's do for participant 13. I won't count through, it's just 12 zeros. actually checking reasonably carefully that I'm doing these things right. Um, I've, I've suddenly had a panic about that one, but that's okay. And then we'll do it finally for participant 14. Um, uh, reason being, it can be quite difficult to change or edit a contrast if you've made a mistake. So uh, ignore the first four participants, so that's 16 zeros. So now we can see that we have got uh, five um, contrasts defined, and they'll just show uh, the difference. The air is more activated by face and scrambled uh, for each of the five participants separately. So we can look at participant 10, say, okay, I'm done. We are still going to go in and um, use the same settings. Um, corrected 0.05 it's not going to look as good I think we've got to face that let's go to the global max and overlays on previous sections in here so for this participant it's just a far smaller region if I bring up a separate um, results table we see we've got if you can read that it's so tiny we've just got one cluster of 38 voxels but again and it's it's uh, it's just left hemisphere now I'm hoping that if I go to contrast and go to the next contrast, we'll bring up the same thing for the next participant. That's not looking quite so good. Uh, nothing where we might want it, and the global maximum is a slightly odd location. Let's just um, see if 
if we get a label for that. It says unknown, but let's just pull it in a tiny bit. And it's pretty central gyrus. It's odd. And let's go for next contrast. Um, this is being a little slow because it it's not shown it to us before, so it has to be calculated. This time we've got participant 12. Oh, I mean, I pressed the wrong button, I should have used previous sections, but yeah. Um, that's that's more like it. Um, that's the kind of area we're expecting a face area to be. This time note it's right hemisphere, whereas in another subject it was left hemisphere. I think we've probably got one more going up to participant 13. And we here we have no super threshold clusters at all. And to reinforce that, we have no super threshold clusters. Um, what you usually do in this, you think, what the hell's gone wrong? And you then just change the significance level. <laughs> so uh, it's it's not corrected, and there we have it uncorrected. And if we just change it slightly, we can see that we are getting these areas showing up. Though, in a strict sense, um, people normally consider the, the family-wise area to be quite conservative, and given that these voxels are where we might expect them to be, we should say, oh yeah, that's definitely fusiform face area, but we don't have a high degree of confidence in the data here. If we look at a plot for this, and we plot the fitted response for, this is participant 13, um, against time, we get the plot and you see what it's trying to fit here is blank for all the other participants oh, I missed a participant. and the model it's such a pale grey you can hardly see it this is this is um, faces minus scrambled and we can see the data are very noisy but sometimes where we've got a, a peak for faces this goes up and it goes down for scrambled um, remember also that each block is only 16 seconds long, so there, there, there are only sort of three samples from a given voxel, three and a bit samples from a given voxel in any one block. Um, so let's just go to the, n the next participant, participant 14, and um, just want to. I should have set that to. Again, no super threshold clusters at a normal corrected threshold, but if we if we change it to um, an uncorrected threshold that's just uh, set to P001 rather than 05, um, which is th there's no good justification for doing that. We find they've got uh, clusters both sides. So you can see the advantage of taking sort of the average across participants you end up with a much much uh, stronger um, oh yeah, you end up, end up with a much stronger effect so that's the fully corrected one we're interested in I wanted to finish on a high note there uh, as a reminder that there are good results if we look at all five sessions remember of course we could just have done multiple sessions for one participant and the analysis would have been uh, exactly uh, the same but you can see uh, the signal to noise problem in MRI as long as you're still getting good data you want to scan as long as possible okay so that's enough on the contrasts for now um, next couple of videos we'll look at ways of uh, visualizing the data on 3D surfaces.